Hello, everyone. Welcome to Explorer Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so glad that you are joining us today. This week, many of our viewers who are connected to the United States military are preparing to celebrate Veterans Day this Friday. We hope you have a special time honoring loved ones who have served in the United States military branches. And we thank our military personnel and families for their sacrifice and their service. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explore a Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. And this school year, every month will be organized around a specific theme. This November, Explore a Classroom will be exploring the importance of learning from the past. You know, November 4th marks the 100th anniversary of discovering King Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. From the tomb's opening back in 1922 to current day, National Geographic has been telling the story of King Tutankhamun for over a century. Today is extra special because our explorer is joining us from Alexandria, Egypt. Dr. Fred Hebert is an archeologist in residence at National Geographic Society and a National Geographic explorer who has traveled the world looking for ancient artifacts. This means that Fred uses clues, history, and technology to literally dig and restore and study very old items so that we can know about how people lived in the past. Today, Fred will tell us about the treasures he has helped uncover in ancient Egypt and what these treasures can teach us about the past lives of others. Before we get into Fred's lesson, I would like to give a special shout out to people who have registered from around the globe. Hello to Riverdale Heights Elementary, James S. Wilson Middle School, Boyertown Area School District, Valley Christian School, Bryant Elementary School, Burnsville Eakin Savage School District, and of course, all of our homeschool families out there. We are thrilled to have you. And with that, let's get our Explorer classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Fred, who will share all about the treasures of ancient Egypt. Take it away, Fred. Ah, Fred, turn on your microphone. <laughs> there you go. There you go, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Hi there, hi everybody. I'm Fred Hebert, the National Geographic Archaeologist in Residence here live in Egypt. I'm here to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tutankhamun, one of the most famous pharaohs in all of ancient Egypt. I've got a little show to show you, so we might as well start the PowerPoint on that, and I can walk you through the week that I have been here with a group of people from National Geographic celebrating the anniversary of the discovery of Tutankhamun. Yeah, so we're really excited about the 100th anniversary of Tutankhamun. He became one of the most famous of all the pharaohs in Egypt because he had so many things in his tomb. His tomb was untouched until 1922, actually till November 4th, 1922, when it was discovered and all the glitter and the gold that he was buried with 3,000 years ago was preserved for us to see. And we're going to go start out here in Cairo. So I'm going to take you on the little trip that we just started a couple of days ago, and I'm still here. So let's go on to the next slide, and I'll give you an idea of where we're going from. So here's a map of the globe, because in fact, this is a very long trip. We're going from North America all the way to the continent of Africa. Let's see the next slide, please. Yeah, as you can see, we flew all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. It was a 14 hour flight, unbelievable. But yeah, the good news is you sleep on the airplane and you get up and you're refreshed in a land that's very ancient and very sacred. I just love being here. You can hear in the background the noises of modern Egypt because modern Egypt is just as fascinating as ancient Egypt. Next slide, please. Where I am right now, well, not now, where we landed was the capital of Egypt. You see it on the map. It's the capital city of Cairo. 
Lots of things happened in Egypt because they were all, as you can see where the settlements are, where the cities are, they're all along that blue line. That blue line is the Nile River. The Nile River is an African river that flows into the Mediterranean and is one of the longest rivers in the world. And it's along the Nile River that Egyptian civilization has flourished for nearly 5,000 years. Next slide, please. When I first arrived here, we went into the hustle and bustle of modern Cairo. And here it is, as you can see, there is the river flowing right through the city. There are many millions of people, about 22 million people living in Cairo. And it's been inhabited for literally 5,000 years. And we went in our first days in Cairo, we went from there to ancient Egypt, just off into the desert. Next slide, please. Maybe you've heard of this particular amazing find in Egypt, ancient Egypt, right near the modern city of Cairo. This is the ancient Sphinx. It's the head of a pharaoh on the, lion, on the body of a lion. It's so cool. It's really it's just as cool today as it was 4,000 years ago. Behind that, it's hard to see, but behind that are the great pyramids of Egypt, some of the largest man-made structures in the whole world. How they were made remains a mystery today, but we also had a chance to go see some active archeology span in Egypt. Next slide, please. A friend of mine and a colleague of ours at National Geographic is actually doing excavations right near the pyramids of Egypt in the workers' towns, and they're excavating land around, uh, around the, the pyramids that have never been excavated before. Some archeologists say that only 30% of all the archeological, all the ancient finds have been found in Egypt. That means 70%. That means the most of ancient Egypt is still unknown. Think about that as you're thinking about what you wanna do in life or what you wanna do on your vacations because Egypt has so many mysteries still to be told. Next slide, please. So from Cairo in the north, we took a trip back to the ancient capital of Egypt back 3,300 years ago to the time of Tutankhamun. Next slide, please. Oh, well, you didn't get to see the trip, but we go down to a place called the Valley of the Kings. Unlike the pyramids here in the Valley of the Kings, and there you see a group of people going and walking up into the Valley of the Kings. There are no pyramids there. All the kings were buried in underground tombs. And this was because they wanted to keep them safe and they wanted to have the Pharaoh continue into the afterlife. And that's why they put so many jewels and gems and chairs and beautiful things up that I'm going to show you in just a little bit, excuse me. It's a little windy out here. So, I mean, you're actually in Egypt right now. So, you know, that's what happens out here in the field. All right, let's go on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so when you go into these royal tombs in Egypt, there's about 60 of them in Egypt. It's really quite amazing. 60 pharaohs, 60 burials underground, deep underground, and you see they're carved out of the limestone. And inside of them, they carve pictures of the pharaohs. They carve pictures of the gods. Here's a picture of a column carved out of solid stone with the Pharaoh meeting a God. And that's supposed to help the Pharaoh go into the afterlife and live forever. Next slide, please. The way the Pharaohs went to the afterlife is they were mummified. There on the bottom of this picture, you see some mummies. We saw a whole bunch of mummies while we were here in, in Egypt. It was quite amazing to see them thousands of years old, still preserved to this day, still respectfully displayed in the museums of Egypt. Above that, you see a series of attendants who are waiting for the Pharaoh to come back to life so that they can help him go to the afterlife, back to be eternal, back to become a god. So a king, a Pharaoh could become, would go from being a mortal to being a god in ancient Egypt. It was pretty cool to see all this underground. Next picture, please. Now I'm going to show you a couple of really cool objects from the tomb of Tutankhamun. 
and you can show that a couple of times because this is a wooden box that is carved and it's got all this beautiful relief and all these beautiful paintings. And this is where King Tutankhamun kept his clothing. And it's really neat. They, when the tomb was originally found, they found this box, they opened it up and they found his shirts, his pants. Well, he didn't have pants, he had kilts. And they found 145 pairs of underwear. How about that? He was really prepared for the afterlife. All in these boxes like that. Next one, please. He had six beautiful, excuse me, he had four beautiful handmade thrones. This one made out of wood covered in gold. Next picture, please. And here's a detail. It's completely covered. Uh-oh, it's a little windy here, so. It's covered in gold and it's so beautifully made. On the left-hand side of the screen, that's King Tutankhamun. On the right hand of the side, is his wife, Ankin Senamun. And it's obviously a very tender, loving scene of a husband and a wife who were both Pharaoh, who were also Pharaoh and queen. And it was this, their own personal throne that was put into the tomb, very touching. It was an emotional thing to see that particular object. Next picture, please. Here's another amazing thing from the tomb of Tutankhamun another box where his clothing was kept. This one carved in the shape of a cartouche. A cartouche is actually, when it comes around to look at the front, you'll see it's actually a series of signs. That is his name as it's written on that cartouche. Can you believe that? He has his name and they carved a wooden box out of wood and wood is a very rare resource in ancient Egypt. So they probably went up to Israel or Lebanon or all over the place to get this wood. And they made this very fine box with Tutankhamun's name on it. How special is that? He got to take that to his afterlife. Good for him. Next slide, please. Now, you may have heard of Tut, but undoubtedly, as you grow up, you'll see this picture of Tut's burial mask. It's made of solid gold. It is undoubtedly the most beautiful artifact in the whole tomb. It's so delicately made. It's got blue glass on it. It's inlaid. It covered his mummy. It is what really protected the Pharaoh Tutankhamun to go to the afterlife. Now, if you look at that portrait in the, on the mask, you'll see that Tutankhamun was a young man. He became Pharaoh when he was nine years old, only nine, and he only ruled for 10 years. So he passed away to eternity when he was 19. And can you believe in the tomb with literally over 5,000 beautiful artifacts just like that. Next one, please. He even had six chariots because he was a hunter. He loved to go hunting. This is a beautiful wooden chariot with two wheels that would have been pulled by horses. And the archaeologists were able to reconstruct it. It's covered in gold. It's so beautiful. And believe me, Tutankhamun really loved life. He played games. He went on hunting trips. And this was his golden chariot that he went out into the desert to go hunt animals. It's really an amazing artifact. I, the craftsmanship, the, the amount of time that it took to make and the value of all these things just are amazing to think that these are 3,300 years old. Okay, let's move on to the next picture. There is going to be a new museum in Egypt, back in Cairo, not far from the pyramids, where all 5,000 artifacts from Tutankhamun are gonna be on display. So, you know, you can tell your parents when you're done with this Explorer classroom, hey, dad, hey, mom, Maybe we should take a trip to Egypt and go see these actual treasures because the treasures aren't going to travel to the U.S. anymore. They're not going to travel around anywhere. They're going to be at home in Egypt, and it's a great place to visit. I can tell you I'm here right now. Next slide, please. So I took my final trip from that city of Luxor, which is in southern Egypt, all the way north to the Mediterranean Sea, to one of the most beautiful, lovely cities in Egypt that I could possibly go. 
to do this Explore Classroom. So at this point, I wanna go live from Alexandria, Egypt, and you can see the living city here. You can see the bay where Cleopatra had her palace, and we can see the land where Alexander the Great visited Egypt for the first time. And he, just like I did, fell in love with Egypt. So I'm happy to take your questions. Gina, let's hit it. Well, absolutely, Fred. Thank you so much for a wonderful show today and coming live from the wild, windy city of Alexandria. Thank you all very much. And in a couple of years, you'll be coming and visiting here too, I'm sure. Yeah, let's put a great show of hands. Raise your hands if you wanna go. Who's interested? We're with you, Fred. Great. Me too, I wanna go. I'm here, but like. <laughs> well, thank you also to all of our classes and teachers who have logged in with us today. We are so grateful for you. Fred, did you want to say one more thing? Go ahead. No, I just want to say how great it is. And your excitement is just, you know, go and tell all your all of your friends about ancient Egypt and how you had a conversation with an archaeologist today. That's right. And remember, head to your libraries, talk to your families about how you can do more research. Maybe you'll be the one in the future who changes all of our textbooks. And I hope you are. Our next event for ages four through eight is going to be November 14th. Put it on your calendar because we're gonna hear from explorer Maria Fadiman. She's going to do a very special episode to celebrate Geography Awareness Week. And we're gonna celebrate the importance of plants. You will not want to miss this episode. So go ahead, register for this event and all the ones coming up on the calendar. Go to natgeoed.org backslash Explore Classroom. You can even request to be on screen like many classes were today with Fred. And teachers, we have created a new interactive guide that you can share with your students. You can take them on a learning journey after every one of our guests has presented. So make sure you look for that in your registration. Find the Explore Mindset in Action Guide and the Teacher Edition linked on every event registration page. Well, have a great day, everyone. Stay curious, keep exploring. And from Alexandria to America to around the world, we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.